had agreements on how to keep the border peaceful and tranquil. And those agreements were violated by China in 2020. Until those forward deployments are addressed, the tensions would continue. If the tensions continue, it casts a natural shadow over the rest of the relationship. So our relationship hasn't been great for the last four years. Since you mentioned trade, it does uh, make me think of China and the complex relationship that India and China have. I note that just recently China surpassed every other country in its trade relationship with India, and yet tensions with China persist, and I would love to hear how you see the strategic picture with respect to China and what India is trying to achieve in its relationship with China. Um, you know, um, when it comes to trade, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, China accounts for about globally about 31, 32 percent of global manufacturing. I think that would be the right number. And a lot of that has happened because over multiple decades, uh, uh, the international business, which is primarily Western led, uh, has chosen uh, to collaborate with China for mutual benefit. So today for any country, if you are into any kind of consumption or even into any kind of manufacturing, sourcing out of China is, is something which is inevitable. Because if you are consuming, if you are not manufacturing and consuming, that's probably where you get a lot of things the cheapest. And even if you are manufacturing a lot of your components and your semi-processed materials, uh, you know, uh, come, come out of there. So what happens is that, uh, in a sense, trade with China at one level is almost autonomous of the political uh, or the rest of the relationship, you can say. So I don't think it's just a question of numbers. You also need to look at what is it which, which you, are, you are trading. Because there would be countries who would be more sensitive to their exposure. Uh, there would be countries who wouldn't care. So uh, I think for us today, uh, because we were earlier on uh, digital, on technology, uh, we are very sensitive uh, to our data flows. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's often to me a little perplexing that people uh, debate so deeply how the data must be uh, secured at home, but are less uh, concerned about what happens when the data leaves your borders. So uh, in, in a much more data sensitive world, in a much more technology sensitive world, I think it's important to, to look at what your exposures are, how do you mitigate it, how do you balance it, how do you, how do you diminish the risks. Uh, separately from that, uh, in terms of our own relationship with China, I think uh, uh, it's a long story, but the short version is that we had agreements on how to keep the border peaceful and tranquil, and those agreements were violated by China in 2020. And uh, some of the, because we have forward deployments of our militaries, uh, uh, those, there are resulting tensions. And until those forward deployments are addressed, the tensions would continue. If the tensions continue, it casts a natural shadow over the rest of the relationship. So our relationship hasn't been great for the last four years.